All right, bowling fans, here we are back live. Vision Lanes, Westland, Michigan, PBA 50 Cup Stepladder Finals. Craig Elliott, Tom Carter to my left. We Running are here. The show right in the ship over there to our far left, Chase Kaufman. And Tom, it's time. It is time. We have had one whale of a day here watching guys. I mean, through all the transitions that the lanes have gone through, guys throwing balls all over the place. This literally first all over the place. <laughs> literally <laughs> all over the place and with Tommy Hess and John Marcel. I mean, it's good. We've got three Hall of Famers on the show. I don't want to give a whole lot of things away. I mean, I don't know how much you've given away. Nothing. But it's kind of like a big secret here, I think, tonight, because this show for Vision Lanes with three Hall of Famers, the first time they've ever had uh, a PBA 50 stop, I, this is a big deal. And with Tommy Hess, who could have been the number one seed but lost his match to Jason Couch, uh, is our number five seed going against John Marcella. And Marcella is basically, I don't know, would you call him the underdog? Well, yeah, I mean, you have to. He's got two titles. You know, he won a, a year ago at the Bud Moore Classic. Um, but, you know, you look at this this lineup, Parker Bowen the third, what, 30-plus national titles, Hall of Famer, Barnes Hall of Famer, Couch Hall of Famer, Tom Hess, reigning player of the year, uh, rookie there, and we're ready to get on our way now with our Marcella and Hess. Tom's going to start the match here. And also leader in the uh, Player of the Year points right now. Nine for nine on cash is three match plays, one title for Tom Hess. We've got three players that already have a title this year. And I, we saw Tom fight that on 25 and 6 in his match play. It's just the ball's just, it's just hooking early on him. This pattern, 39 feet. And they, as many times as we've oiled, and we've talked about this, I think, every time we have a show, exactly about all the re-oils, the pattern just gets flatter. And 39 feet, I've always thought, is one of the tougher patterns anyway because you kind of have to keep the ball in the tube, and you can't swing it too far right because it wants to hang. But if you miss left, it goes dead left, and that's kind of what happened to Tommy right there. And you're just getting started out. You, this a very, I call a very speed-sensitive pattern. you got to be on point on this pattern. Yeah, we saw even Jason Coach, every time he'd throw a shot on 25 and 6, he'd turn around and look at the speed. And he was, I mean, he was between 16.55 and 16.75 on his strikes. He, if he, he was 16.8, it was something. He was looking, he bowled to the right of me. And every time he missed a shot, the first thing he did, he'd come back and look. And he'd see that he'd thrown it too firm. And this is a pattern you can overthrow the pattern on. It's just, you would, wouldn't think that you could. But it, it's so touchy, and I keep talking about a tube, and I talked about it earlier uh, when we were down there in the round of eight, that if you get out of this tube, whether it be too slow a ball speed or too fast a speed, you pay pretty much almost maximum penalty. Yeah, we saw a lot of splits this week from a lot of players. And let's quickly, let's, let's give you the rundown of the top five since we, uh, we got, uh, we're a little quick there. It was late match play round. We did a quick turnaround. We didn't get a chance to set up the booth cam, so that's good for all you out there. You don't have to look at Tom and I. Thank God for that. We didn't have time for hair and makeup today. So <laughs> but Parker Bowen, the third, our number one seed. Chris Barnes, the two. Jason Couch, the three. Marcelo, the four. And Tom Hess, the five. And, and you the just gave thing, away the secret. Which one? Of what the top five was going to be. I said, it's going to be kind of a secret. And no, you just yeah. gave away the oh, secret. We got it. They already know. <laughs> but what, what, and, and we talked about it with Chase weird season. You know, I mean, we had a chance to see Bone versus Barnes again. Their kids just met for the U20 Junior Gold title. We can have. We talked parents. about that down there, yes. I mean, I, I, honestly, this how, is a how replay. cool would that be? Really? Oh, the kids bowl, now the, the, the dads are bowling. I mean, this, yeah. this is pretty awesome. And Ryan Barnes has actually been here repping for his dad, Chris, all week long as he's done the last few events here. After another look at Marsala. Nice slow mo there. Just a bit high again, leaves the six pin. Yeah, John down there, he was throwing that UC2. And he was playing it right up five. I mean, he was labeling it up five. And, and he's a lefty that doesn't really throw, throw much of your thing. No, yeah. and all the other lefties, Troy Lent. That's, uh, that's all they throw. <laughs> yeah, he was throwing a purple hammer. Um, Parker threw a purple hammer. Gary Ray threw uh, an attitude control. They had a great uh, week for Gary Ray, fantastic yeah. week. I mean, he pulled fantastic. You know, uh, as a ball rep, I was pulling my hair out. I was hoping he'd switch balls because – you know, the lanes were transitioning, and he's, he's new and he's young out here, and he, he just missed the move and 
the tricks that he's you have young. to do. He's young. <laughs> you know, he's a young 50. He actually, yeah. he's a young 60. Young 60. Yeah. Right. Yeah, well, Tom got that one right. And speaking of right, how many gutter balls did you guys see this a lot. week? A lot. And, and, and when you're playing 15, 16, 17, and we still saw balls going to the gutter because – you just push a little right, get a little quick, and see you later. The, the out of bounds was huge if you pushed it right. And, and a lot of the guys were playing right around 15. In the qualifying, again, lanes get different every time we re-oil, but in qualifying, a lot of guys were playing somewhere between 14 and 17, crossing the arrows, trying to get it to the break point around 7, 8. But if they pushed it out a little quick, oh, it fell right at gutter. It, wasn't even, it didn't even think about it. And so many guys missed like a 2, 8. Four pins and seven pins because there's so much hook. You think, okay, the ball's going to hook across the lane, and it never did. Yeah. <laughs> we saw a lot of uncharacteristic misses this week, right and left. Uh, so this was a challenging pattern. I think this is one of the toughest ones we've had all year, to be honest. It, well, didn't, it didn't look that way on paper. Right? No. I mean, it's a four to one, which is the biggest ratio we've had. Right. On paper, but then you look at the specifics of it, and it uh, it played tough. Well, there, there's a couple of factors, I think. One, you know, it's a major. That puts a little pressure on guys. Uh, but being a new facility, the the atmosphere is a little different here. The, on qualifying day, all of the air is behind us. It's not up here on the approach. And it got hot up there, and I think that played a factor on a lot of guys because their hands got sweaty, and, you know, uh, along with a tough lean condition, uh, it, it made it challenging. But rightly so, this is a major. It should be challenging. Sure. I mean, guys should be able, uh, you hopefully, to overcome whatever they throw at you. And the guys that did were obviously the ones that we're watching tonight. Well, Hess got his first strike, went to a reality of that last shot. Oh, roll the old three pin a little forward there. I, today, since we know who the top five are, since you gave it away, <laughs> the, the left side is going to probably transition a little bit more than the right, which is kind of different than usual because normally we only have one lefty on the show and all righties. And now we have three lefties on the show, but they all throw it a little bit different. And, and the, the thing before everybody gets on to all oh, the left is walled, all three of those matches, they were lefty versus righty. So they both had the lanes to themselves. Right. So it just came down to who just who bowled better. Simple as that. And it was Parker, Jason, and John Marsala winning their matches. And you said it earlier, but, you know, John being probably the only one that throws reactive, but it's just his game. He's able to get the ball through the front part of the lane and not have it read until the latter part. The other guys have a little higher rev rate, so they have to do different things. But even though that Jason Couch did throw your thing, he also threw reactive. So did he, um, when he, this afternoon, did he? Early? Because he had not the first two days. He, he, well, he did, next to me, he threw a hammer raw. Okay. You know, he's been kind of sticking with that black wood on the most. Well, he got that clear out to five. And it's a good thing that Tommy's got a lot of hand because for a lot of guys, that wasn't coming back from there. Making sure he gets all the oil off that cover stock before he throws it again. Working that chamois pretty hard. Tommy could have forced the situation where he could have been the number one seed, possibly if he struck out, which would have forced Jason to have to actually do something in the 10th, but... I didn't see the shot. I seen the result, which looked like the two four eight ten. Yeah, two four eight. I think it was his last shot. And the shot. two fell out. <laughs> Tommy has starting with About spare spare three bag. Seventeen and a half out to what's that? Six maybe. And what, one thing that Tommy does, yeah, he's getting it out to five six. He got the one on the right lane out a little farther, but. One thing Tommy does, and he's done it the last two shots, and we, again, this is something we always talk about for all of our bowlers, how he posts the shot. He just literally yeah. sticks it right at the line. 
And, and he's a big guy, too. That puts a lot of stress and pressure on your knees, but he posts just about every single shot, as you're saying there, and it's uh, watching the ball go through the pins. And you see Johnny on that shot. He almost he fell off. Right, He's out of the shot before it even gets even close. And when you, as a lefty, if you fall left, the ball's going to the right. John Marcella's biggest downfall sometimes is right there when he gets his forward tilt too far over his knees. He can't post his shot. Yeah, and he makes a spare off camera there. We saw a nice slow mo of that replay, and you see it's just creeping high. He's just got to just stay down on a little bit, right? Don't jump up. How about Gary Foreman hanging out in the background there? Y yeah, one of the owners of uh, Fountain Bowl in California. Which former just, owner. Former owner, former which owner. just recently sold. Yeah, he's, he's not hurting for money right now. I think he can buy us a drink. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think yeah. he can buy us a distillery. I, I think he all owes us a drink because yeah. he, he did okay. He's in town working junior gold or in the state working junior gold. Looks like we went, we went a ball return. Or? We got something going on. I think uh, John... John's waiting on something. Not sure what that hand signal is. <laughs> oh, oh, the top of the ball return is making noise. I knew I could hear something rattling. That wasn't the ball return? No. <laughs> <laughs> Are you starting already? Well, yeah, since I got absolutely labeled on our picks here. Oh, I, who won? Oh, who won? <laughs> Ooh. I can tell you for certain it was not me. <laughs> Chase, 136, really? Well, okay, so here's the thing. Well, that was I after had, round one. I didn't even read you a round two. I, I had an obligatory pick you. with my dad. Okay. And then I had to take someone else because Pete was dropped out, and he was averaging 204. So Craig said, I'll let you take anybody that's averaging 204 or less. So I took Dave Taylor because he was averaging 204, and he had the front four right in front of us. Didn't work out well for me. No. It's all right. <laughs> bad Live ju and learn. Bad juju. Yeah. yeah. Live and learn. Well. Let's see here. Oh, well, that's even more BS right there. You have Barnes and Couch, so you have two guys uh, on the show. Imagine that. I had five guys in the top 24. Actually, yeah, but top Ch 17. Chase has got the tournament leader, so, I mean, that should count for something. Nope. I nope. think in the DraftKings world, I'd get some bonus points for that. I but honestly agree. I mean, they're working on this ball return, so we got time to talk about this. <laughs> You're reaching now, both of you. <laughs> well... <laughs> we, we should. <laughs> I think that we are going to redo this in Hammond. I got news That's for you. I wonder where my oil pattern went. You stole it there. There's the oil pattern. It was laying over there. <laughs> what pattern are they bowling on, gentlemen? Don Carter, 39-footer. Judd's Lane Cleaner and Formula 45 oil. Four to one. You would think, as tough as this pattern was, that we were closer to one and one, and that break didn't do John Marcella any good. No. Through the face for a big four. <clears throat> yeah, that's obviously something he didn't want to see. With oh, oh, come on. He gave it a run. He sure did. He gave it a run. Got three quarters of them. Tom Hess going to take a nice little lead the back half of this game. Opening match of our stepladder final here. How about this? Kicks the four over, four takes the ten. Needs to cut just a little bit more. Uh, a little more love and he'd have got out mm. that six. I'll tell you what, that six pin, it, that, that's what cost Tom Hess the number one seed. He was on a couple of strikes, and then he had a nice string after that. It was a sixth, I think sixth frame. He threw a great shot, had a messenger coming across, and the six pin. Just tipped over right in front of the 10th the last minute and blocked it. I didn't get to see that. I was or he won the match. I was with the Parker Bone Eugene McCune match. Yeah, and Parker's only averaging 256. His yeah, two Parker matches shot today. 760. Yeah, 764, I think. Yeah, so that's uh, all. That was a little yeah. lower than his earlier match by seven Yeah, pins. You talk about somebody who was wired. How about this shot for Tom Hess? But well, there's a guy that's been wired this whole PBA 50 season. They got out to five. Tommy Hess has been absolutely on fire. I, how many shows does he make? Five? All of them. All of them. I yeah. just every week it's Tommy Hess. 
And he, uh, he won our last tournament up in uh, Greeley, Colorado. Hopefully we get to go back there. That was a nice place. Sure was. Fun town. And according to uh, Steve Klein, I believe that we're going to get to come back here. Awesome. Steve and his family have done a phenomenal job. Well, they, they've earned a return trip. Oh. All the work they've done. For the motorhomes, he got his plumber to come in to put us water out there because we didn't have water on that side of the building. And this guy comes in at 8.30 at night till 10.30 just to put a water spigot out there for us. Nice. So Steve just, he went over and above the call of duty here. That's about 17 to 4. He's opening up a little bit more and giving it to business. Johnny just doesn't have a look. He's not getting And all of the urethane that went down the lane because the guys had practice, and I know the other lefties threw some urethane down there. might have been affecting John's break point a little bit but by Tommy playing in you, you kind of got to think that's kind of playing into Chris Barnes's hand when he gets here too well Chris will go dead right you think you think he'll go even deeper dead right or dead left uh, I think he might go right I mean Tom's already at 17 I mean let's just think if he wins this match and then and then uh, you know goes against Barnes that'll be he'll be probably into 19 oh they're going to get yeah they'll get farther left they're not getting any farther right down lane, I don't think. No, no, no. See a good shot there. Tom just visualizing everything he wants to do, talking through the shots. Great camera shot right there. It's like he's in a, a trance. Oh, it does. He's got his hands up. Yeah, he's concentrating. There's no doubt about it. He wants his title more than anything. Keeping his it's, hand it's, cool. He's got his fan a, right there. It's another major. You know, and he's won two majors, so they're already calling him Major Tom. Major Tom. Actually, three majors. Greeley was his only non-major in his fourth title of his career because he won the Masters, the uh, main Masters. True. Yeah, the real Masters. His first three titles yeah. were all majors. So real quick, Chase, how did Dad think about the PBA 50? He had fun. I, well, I wouldn't say he had fun, but he enjoyed the competition for sure. Oh, that's good. This is his first one he's done, but he turned 50 in September. But he, he thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, well, he threw it a million miles an hour he with sure a million does, revs he? on it. I go, that's, that's wrong. <laughs> People have to ask for his ID. Oh, there's no doubt. No. He threw it fantastic. Yeah, he's still learning, though, you know. He's a lot, lot to learn about the ball, ball knowledge, lane play. But just a lot of splits this week, and it's just when he misses, he misses by, you know, three or four boards rather than one or two boards. And right. And just leaves a lot of multi-pin stuff. So You know, uh, and Craig and I talk about it all the time. You know, you can put out this pattern at home, mm -hmm. and you can break it down and bull on it and think, well, I don't see what the problem is. Nope. But when you're out here in the moment crossing with these guys and they're breaking it down different with the rev rates, uh, it, it's a lot to learn because – it's not the same as home. I mean, ball motion is different. Break points are different, you know, and just the way you throw the ball is different uh, because you're trying so hard. And that mm -hmm. could have been a little bit of dad's problem, you know. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the new guys want it. They're like, I don't want to embarrass myself, so I, you know, I want to do good. That's kind of what I told him, too, because bowling junior gold for years and years, the tendency is to, you know, go out there, hit the pocket, and hope it happens. But you can't, you can't baby the ball. you got to go out there, and you got to throw the ball. Right. This is a, a game that can uh, humble you very quickly. For sure. <laughs> Marcella can still shoot 223, and Tom's got to not just have any drastic mistake here. That's 17, 18 to the arrows. I think you're the black cat. <laughs> he, just <laughs> he crossed a little inside. That's, you know, and as big as Tommy is, you think that speed might have been a little bit slower because the – Crossing the arrows right at 17, 18, but he didn't get it near as yeah, far didn't right. Yeah, get it down. He, he only got it to like down there. Yeah, yeah, he only got it to like eight. And he's been getting it out to six. Yep. That's a couple inches makes a big difference. That kind of goes back to what Chase was just saying. You know, Dad used to three or four more boards, and when you, <laughs> you cut that in half, it makes it a little bit different. So Tommy has still could shoot 245. All right, that's a big spread. 
But Marcella can definitely put some pressure on him if he strikes out for well, 223. I mean, yeah, nine outs, 223, and Marcella can shoot 222. So if he if he sheets, he makes Tom get up and at least uh, you know get the right count. I've learned my lesson counting matches over too soon because, boy, we've seen some strange stuff out yeah. here. Yeah, you know, the numbers play some strange games on you. He just went to a UFO alert, I think. He just switched balls. He had that down there. Why so not? Out of the clear blue, he switches like balls. It. Yeah. I mean, his ball motion, I mean, again, he playing his basically straight down 5 7. Much better reaction on the back end. Oh, Gary. unless Gary. unless that falls backwards, nope. he missed that off his hand, totally. So that, unfortunately, for. John Marcel, it just kind of winds up the day for him. John's going to be finishing fifth. Tommy Hess going on to meet Jason Couch. Tell you, as much as Hess wants another win, Couch has been knocking on the door this year out here. He's but been Couch in the mix is, every tournament he shows up to. He is so injured right now. His, the base of his thumb is absolutely hamburger. His, on his spare ball, he had to throw. I think his slug sunk down in. Again? And he had a sharp edge there. And you know, he did the best he could, but it ended up obviously tearing up the, the base of his thumb. And he muddled through it. At one point, he th he's in, what, third or fourth? He, uh, starting today, he was going to withdraw, he thought. So, but... We gotta, get, we gotta get that man a good spare ball. He's been through a couple of them this year. As a bowler, he just I'll wait till he gets numb. <laughs> It'll be all right. Can we talk to that Brunswick ball rep and see if we get Jason a good spare ball that fits him right? Because remember he, he had that trouble in the villages as well, and he well, drove he, a new one. And we thought he was going to leave that ball in the parking lot. Remember? <laughs> Tommy has just got to go through the motions to finish up this match to meet. Chris Barnes, USBC Hall of Famer. Jason Couch. Oh, Jason Couch. Sorry about that. Then Barnes. I, I'm, a, I'm one step ahead of you. So we got Tom's prediction. He's got Tom Hess advancing. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's my prediction. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a great match, too. The guys are pretty good friends, bowled a lot, you know, bowled Dubai together. <laughs> and the only reason is because I <laughs> you, you want somehow to I'm going to win this you want draft. Hess to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't have to repick our winners here in the step out here because we've all got somebody represented. Some of us have two. It's not bad. We picked four of the five guys in the step later two and a half days ago. Well, that's pretty much knowing your bowlers and how they bowl and in yeah, any and condition. And who's bowling well this year. Oh. Yeah, not like we went on a limb on any of these players. They've all won no. except for Coach. But he's been as close as everybody out there. Well, Jason, in his defense, he doesn't bowl all the tournaments. I right. mean, uh, he's a ball rep. Uh, he's, you know, he's got trade shows to do. He had Bowl Expo. He's got a lot of other things on his plate. And still to come out here in, in his limited time and perform and bowl good, and he actually even bowl good hurt, that's pretty impressive. So Jason Couch has bowled six events this year in the PBA 50 Tour. At scratch the USBC Masters, he finished 118th. With the rest of his events, 15th at Budmore, 2nd in Mooresville, 7th in Granville, 3rd in the Villages, and 22nd in the first event. A lot of T10s. Yeah, that's uh, pretty solid. Well, you don't become the Tournament of Champions three-peat winner for not being exceptional. Hey, for anybody that ever gets a chance to come out and 
actually watch these guys in person. If you're even close to one of the events, I know you get to see them on TV, but actually come out and watch them live, uh, y you need to do that because in person it is a total different feeling and unbelievably impressive to watch what these guys can do with a bowling ball. Uh, no doubt about it. And, and so as is, is impressive as that sounded for Jason, how about this this line for Tom Hess this year? First event, 11th, then 8th, 2nd, 10th, 2nd, 11th, 11th, 4th, and 1st. Tom's worst finish this year is 11th. <laughs> through nine events. That's, uh, that's pretty impressive. That's why he's leading the points. Yeah, I guarantee you, Tom he knows exactly where he's at oh, in the he points. Does. He, yeah. he, he oh, does. He's he, got that on his book. He's, he's all about, yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a numbers guy. He's a stat guy. He knows exactly where everything is at. You got your new friend there, yeah, we, Squeaky. Uh, the, the, this could be our. I'm telling everybody well, right now, you better be glad we don't have a booth cam because you don't want to see <laughs> Tom Carter's new toy here. Well, th this could be our, our, our three bagger. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. This is compliments to Chase because he just won them in the machine over there. I want to see you squeeze that when Pete Weber's up on the approach and see what happens. Oh. There you go. There, there you there go. You go. The, I mean, you, folks, you got to see that. That's it. This is our new toy. I won two of them. It was a double prize. I won on the same oh. try. <laughs> Kids and their toys. That's right. Couch getting his practice shots in here. <laughs> you, just, you just lost no, your whole train fine. of thought, didn't yeah, you? We're gone. We're gone. <laughs> See you later. Off the rails. <laughs> Off the rails, and Flanagan's not well, even here to, to get us back on track. <laughs> Well, Flanagan would get us off the rails. Oh, uh, yeah, we, we're both uh, pretty good at it. You know, we always talk about people getting wound up in bowling and putting too much stress on themselves. And we always say, you know, you got to remember it's just a game and it's got to be fun. So I don't really care if it's out there or back here. It's still oh, got to be oh, fun yeah, because absolutely. that's why we do this. You know, uh, whether you're, you're a commentator or you're a bowler, I mean, you do it for the love of the sport. And, it, and it's fun, and that's just what we do. And I think this is what my fifth or sixth year, something like that, work of the PBA 50 Tour, and this has been the funnest year by far. Oh. All the players oh. just have, I don't know, I think, you know, I think with, you know, with the year off and missing some time, everybody's just happy to be back out here, oh. the camaraderie, you know, uh, and it's just, there, there's just no drama whatsoever. I totally agree. I mean, guys are looking forward to get back on the lanes and yeah. just, and seeing all the guys again. I mean, it, you hate to say this, but, you know, some guys, it's not even about cashing or making the. No. It's just about being out here with the guys and getting the bowl, you know. Uh, and that, that's, I guess that's the best part. Yeah. And there isn't another sport in the country that you can go out and participate, be on the same pair of lanes, pay your money, and bowl the greatest bowlers in the world. Now, you can't do that in baseball, football, or golf. Hey, I'll pay my entry fee, and I'll be on the same <laughs> Actually, I, I would love if I could pay a thousand bucks and you'd have to take a net bat off Nolan Ryan. I, I would pay for that. You would pay for that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would. But yeah, I mean, this is a sport that we, we can't compete on the other level with those pros. Even golfers, even professional golfers are really, 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 really good. He's won 16 times on the PBA tour. You may remember his three peat at the Tournament of Champions, three consecutive wins in that event. He's a PBA and USBC Hall of Famer. He's a champion at the PBA 52. Please welcome Jason. Couch Cole. doing what he does, getting the crowds wound up. Oh, yeah. He likes playing to the crowd. Why not? Again, like I said, have some fun with it. And, uh, you know, him, Dino, all the guys. If they anybody's going to. To make Tom Hess start. Let's give them one more send off to start him up. Guys, good luck in high school. If anybody's going to start giving anybody smack, it's going to be Couch. Sure. So Jason's the guy that put him in fifth. So yeah, a little he, rematch. He, he's got a little payback. He wants. Absolutely. <laughs> he really kind of struggled 
when we watched them on 25 and 26. Just it took him a while to finally get used to his line. He on the shots that he missed, he went high probably on 80, 80 to 85 percent of them. Yeah, I mean it was it was a, not till like frame four of the last game where he really got dialed in. Well, I, he, he, made, he was already down, you know. But he made a ball change. You know, he went from that reality to uh, that RX2, I believe, from our angle here. Yeah, so. you're throwing the, the, the new reality, the, uh, the reality check. And then went to the X2. Everybody's got a banner up there. Great shot right here. Jason's style, a little bit different than it used to be from years back. The backswing not near as high. The checkpoint at the bottom not near as steep. So he's got a longer flat spot at the bottom. Gets the ball out on the lane a little easier. Uh, he struggled with that for a while because his backswing was so high and that it was so steep into the lane that uh, with some of the new equipment, it caused him a, a few problems. Yeah, and everybody out there asking, we, we don't have time to do any giveaways during the step ladder. we got enough going on here that we, we keep those during qualifying as many of their rounds, but not during the step ladder. All right, early double, Jason Couch. Just kind of walking them out. And you watch Jace. I mean, he always walks back, head down. You don't really know if he's good, bad, mad, happy. You, you can't really tell. He gave that one a little bit more room. And, yeah, he's, he's pretty subdued at times, but uh, when he's ready to, to talk, oh, yeah. you'll know it. Oh, yeah. If he fires up, you'll, you'll hear it. And Tommy, is, he's all business right now in these step ladder finals. He's, I mean, everybody wants to win, but he, 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 he's not messing around. No, Tom is severe business. And you can see when he gets set up, he's literally, and a lot of guys do a lot of self-talk, you know, telling themselves what they need to do to stay relaxed, whatever their, their thought process, their pre preset routine. But here from our angle, you can watch Tommy, and you probably see it on the screen. He's literally telling, him what, telling himself what to do. Yep. I mean, that's, that's a great thing. A lot of, a lot of top athletes learn, right, self-talk, self-motivation. Well, you've got to believe in yourself because if you don't, nobody else will. I mean, other than your spouse, you know. <laughs> but I mean, all these guys out here want to win, so you've got to you've got to keep your mindset right. And this game, unfortunately, is so mental at times; it's crazy. Strange things get in your head, and you do bad things with your release. You can talk yourself into throwing a bad shot. I do it all the time. Tommy Hest. He ain't messing around. He's just such a big, strong guy. Crossing almost 19, 20. That's out to seven. And that ball never stopped going left through the pocket. And something to keep an eye on, though, in that match we just saw between them two a little over an hour ago, the only, the only little chink in the armor for Jason is his spare shooting was a bit suspect. He missed a seven pin. Mr. Bucket, there's a couple others that he just barely got. So if this match stays close, it's going to come down to spares. It's going to come down to those spares. And you said he's got trouble with that spare oh, ball. Go, go, go. Wow. And he thought that was there. Uh, well, I think we all did, too. It looked good. Yeah, looked pretty good. Just didn't get the pin action. Well, there's plenty of pin action. He just missed. So that was a little oh. more inside. That was Mark yeah. 11 out. Yeah, yeah. he's playing lanes But a you, bit you see the ball hit the pocket and kind of deflected back to the left. Yeah. And it just didn't really drive through. That thing that we keep saying every week, I, we try to drill into people's head. Uh, the ball tells you what the lane is doing, and the pins tell you what the ball's doing. So, and when that ball deflected kind of like that, it's like, eh, yeah. That ball's not driving as much as it needs to. There we go. Yeah, we got, we got. <laughs> Don't know what happened there. Don't worry about it. He's over here typing. <laughs> do we need a squeak on that? I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I have him. You have your own squeaker.
Oh, that looked like that was way left at the break point. I didn't think that ball was yeah, making a bat. He's farther left on that lane than he is on the right lane. Both shots there, and that was a little can opener here. When he's three, four boards left at the arrows he, and down lane. Yeah, that crossed like 10, 11, and out to five. Yeah. Unless, see, there's, well, we don't know here in the booth. Was that an adjustment or a miss? We, well, you don't know. No, he, he's been throwing a little different on that lane. Big breath in to just be as relaxed as possible on, on these shots. Oh. oh. Yeah. Really? 7 10. <laughs> really? Yeah. And the 5. It wasn't just the 7 10. Watch this. Watch this 5. The 5 didn't go really quick either. He just throwing that pins ball everywhere. That's up to 2.5, 3. That, yeah, the 5. He, he should be excited yeah. about that because that could have been all bad. Save that replay. That was beautiful. <laughs> now that could be the tilt. Oh, are we taking a reset? We are. Well, you know, I think that was. Uh, that might have been the five that took out the ten. Watching it on the on the, uh, the delay here. Five. No, 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 it wasn't. Something else came across. All right. That was a head pin, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and Tom's just resetting. I think I think that uh, that was just uh, after he got a little amped up on the celebration there, just to calm himself down, take a re rack. And yeah, but you only get two re racks. Yeah, that's all right. So, I mean, if the pins have to be, and I understand calming yourself down, but you know, there's always that possibility that that's you need that re rack, and for the break that he got. He pays the price. We haven't seen too many uh, too many bad racks this week, and too many, there hasn't been too many ball calls. No, the whole place has run pretty doggone sweet, I think. And we, they shut down the whole bar and turned it into a VIP room for the players. That was incredible. It, the players and their families ain't. Steve went over and beyond. Yeah, he's been by the booth several times this week. You guys good? You need anything? Everything all right? It's been fantastic. So, trying to bounce it. Doesn't. All right, we're back to a match now. Open frame for Hess. As you mentioned earlier, Tom, you know, you, you miss a little bit. You pay the open price, and there's that split pops up. Well, I, you said earlier, I'm going to throw that in there, that, you know, we're on four to one, which is volume-wise, ratio-wise, should be numbers, e one of the easier patterns, right? Four to one, more in the middle, less on the outside. But it doesn't play that way. It's like there's less in the middle. I think it's one to four. They got the numbers reversed. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. We're going to talk to Eric Pearson about that little graph he gave us there. Oh, almost, almost did almost it again. He, he's pointing at it like, he almost did it to me again. So Jason starting out with double, spare double. Tommy, yeah. four bagger, but then they had that hiccup there in the fifth. Gets a 10 to go this time. I tell you, I walked in, I saw I saw the, the, the lane sheet there, the oil pattern from Eric, and I got, oh, you know, all right, we're going to see some good scores this week. And Well, no. Well, it, even Eric mentioned they're playing a lot tougher than I thought they were going to play early on. You watch that replay. That ball did the same thing as the previous time when it left that uh, 10 pin. Yeah, but this one carried. Well, at least he's repeating shots. How's that? Ask for it to get up, and oh. there's another kind of a weak 10 there. He knew it wasn't going oh, to And he looked up to see how far yeah. he threw it, 16-2. Clear out to like 4-5. Yeah, look, that it, ball went left to the Yeah, that ball went left as soon as it hit. You know, it, it, what's, what's the big thing now? You know, your ball's got to split. Well, for him, uh, we were always talking about the 8-9. Yeah, that almost and, split the 8-7. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not where you want it going off the pin deck. 
But he's got to be careful, make that adjustment, and that's when you go through the face. So I don't know if he's going to, you know. Well, I think that's well, kind I'm of not sure what, what happened. going to be, right? What can he do? I mean, well, the ball's the ball's getting there, but then it's there's just nothing on it once it once it gets there. And he's throwing that black widow, which is an asymmetric cure thing. Well, he keeps looking up at speed, so maybe it's a speed thing. And he threw it a little bit too hard. Well, that, I mean, on this pair here, that's kind of where it was. He was right in that, you know, 16, 6 plus or minus, you know, well, a half mile an hour. Well, and Tommy in the previous shot could have made that adjustment because he almost left that split. So he might have made a move, and then the ball comes in high. That was pure flush right there. You got it yeah. out to five, six down lane. He posted that shot until the ball started back in the return. Stop could still shoot 265. You watch that. That was a ball almost an eight, nine split. That ball went straight back. It's about as good as you can throw it right there. <clears throat> When Tommy, we know that Tommy wants us more than anything. It'd be back-to-back -back wins for him and another major. Get, oh. <laughs> <Let's try it. laughs> I, I don't know if that extra bounce helped, yeah. but <laughs> he he tried. You know, we talked to Tom a lot. He's he's helped us a lot on air. He filled in during the during the senior masters when I was gone. And you know, we talked to him early on the air. How do you how do you set goals for this year after last year? Last year was just phenomenal, right? Rookie right. year play there, and he said, you know what? We'll win him again. Yep. And that's his Repeat. goal. Yeah. Do it all over again. Can't get rookie of the year again. No. I mean Dino's looking to wrap that up. Let's but he can get player him. of the year again. He can get player of the year again, and that's 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 his goal, you know, and that comes with wins. Parker's got two wins, and now with this one, you know, Tom could have two, and he understands that's that's what he's trying to do. Well, <clears throat> Jason's already got a win. No. Jason does not have a win this year. He doesn't? I no. thought he did. Nope. Well, my mistake. I thought he did. Are you sure? 100% positive. Okay. Yeah. I think you're wrong. Why do I think he had a win? It's just that good. Second in Mooresville. Maybe that's where I was thinking he won. I don't know. Get back on it now. There's a, that right lane and that 10 pin is going to be a nemesis to him. Yeah, second to Parker Bone in Mooresville. That was 10 and a half. The ball is just not making the turn on it. I don't know how hard he threw that. He threw it 16.77. A little faster than what he's been doing. Not a lot, but if you take the last three shots in the right lane, lay them on top of each other, and they're all within a half an inch. And two or and ten pins and one carried. So I, he's he, going to have to do something. Well, he could go to a little stronger ball, but then his reaction could be it just totally throw him out of the zone. Right. You know? Uh and I know he did throw your thing at one point. He could move a little left and try to shim it up, but we're back here thinking about it, and he's out there throwing yeah, it. So I, I think just got to be a little bit softer with it, just a little bit softer with it. Well, he's got a two-pin lead. 16-3, 16-4. In the sixth frame, it's 137 to 135 over Hess, and they both have nine spare. So really, this is a three-frame game. Depends on what happens. Well, remember, he's got Tom finishing on that right lane intentionally, and Tom has struck. Every time over there. You heard him say that was the right move, so he did move. <laughs> yeah, that was 16, 13, so he, he slowed up. That's a half yeah. mile an hour slower. That's, that's a that's, lot. That's a big change. He just has got to be able to control his adrenaline. That's easier said than done. 
for a guy like you to throw it 20 mile an hour. Well, and, and remember, that was Jason's game in his prime, right? Just let her fly. Right. Throw it hard, rev it up, and watch it do tricks. So we got a possible 247 to 245 if they both go out. That was almost a 7 9. Tommy just put so much power on that ball. He just, he's so stinking strong. Just, a, I mean, a half four left. And, and, and that's just, range, you, you can see it at the pocket on that slow motion, just high, and it just never, there's probably no chance of it taking out the nine. You well, said that last shot, you know, it was going left still off the end of the deck, and that one, that one just did. I, I'm real curious to see what Barnes is going to do on this pair after he's sitting here watching what, uh, what Tommy Hess is doing. You almost think that when Chris gets over, he's going to be left of that using that burn spot. Is I can't see him going farther right. <laughs> Every time I tell you, I've been burned by Byron so many times on that. So when we think he's going to go left and do this, and everybody else is going left, he says, "No, I'm just going to do the exact opposite." <laughs> he well, did it in Lubbock a few years ago when everybody was left, and he moved right and started lapping the field. You know, when the gutter was not right. in play, but he figured it out with you know. I mean, he can get up the back of it so good. Well, yeah, his up the back of it isn't even in the real game of everybody else's up the back of it. Chris is just insane up the back when he wants to. He can get that ball to check stop amazingly. Yeah. This is a big shot for Tommy. He needs this strike. Oh, my Lord. Wow. Oh. That. Oh, that's the last thing he wants to hear. Yeah, I think. I want to tell that gentleman to just zip it. Yeah. Pretty quickly. <laughs> John Weber just did. So, you know what? You're, you're playing with fire there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That he just absolutely labeled that, and Tom, and Tommy's he's yeah, a little don't, upset. Don't let it bother you. You can't let it bother you. Yeah, Tommy, you got to keep your cool, buddy. Yeah. You know, fans say and do strange things sometimes. That ball. That almost turned into a 6-7 in the pocket. What a match. Wow. What a this, match. Is, this is a uh, – Tommy's smiling. Uh, kudos to him, buddy. He's had two shots right there that are just – to take your breath away. Well, he said he almost left a 9-7. He did. It just took him two shots to do it. And, uh, that wasn't his plan. That's, that's for sure. A strike right here if he can figure out that length. And he leaves us. Uh, it's not 10 pence. It's 7 pence. So you go 20, 40, 60. It's 217. Hess still has two and a quarter. And Hess is just kind of giggling, too. They're both just labeling him. And now can't knock down 10 pins. That, uh, this is three tens. And this is like a slug carry. Back. And now he leaves a he seven. He makes on the this adjustment lane. on this lane. The yeah. ball Still looks deflects. better going off bit the better. deck. Yeah. And leaves a seven. Now, here's the key. You just mentioned earlier about Jason spare shooting. And, and, and he has trouble with his thumb on this. He's not throwing and, a spare ball. And he's not throwing a spare ball. All right. Oh, oh he could have got 7 10. Where was the 10 at? <laughs> so we're down to a four pin match going into the 10th frame. Seems like this is the same thing we had in every match in Greeley. <clears throat> every single match came right down to the 10th frame. Final wow. shot. 
Tommy's on his good lane. Jace is kind of on his good lane. So it's just a matter who performs now, I guess, and gets the breaks. They're saying he's like 10 to, 10 to 6. This is a good shot. At about 16-2. That was, that oh, was that's 11. too far left. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. I thought that was too far left that's down lane. Be, that's got to be lower speed, though, because he, he definitely gave that one more room. That 16, was 11, 5, That was 11 to 5. Yeah. Wow. He must have gave that one to business. We can't he see could. the rotation on it because it's, you know, I it's thought it was too far left right there. No, I'm with you. I agree. He, he definitely. And it didn't look like it was coming back. Oh. He trips out the 10. This one in seven's a winner. We get, an, we get an oink. You're ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> You're having way too much fun with that. Oh, well, it's Chase's idea. <laughs> Unless it's a bad idea, then it's not my idea. <laughs> One time, he's walking it off. There it is. We're going to have to ask Jason Towns for an extra pelican case so we can take squeaks with us. <laughs> so, so is that what we say that Jason squeaked by on this one? <laughs> and that is the end of our show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> he, still needs, he still needs seven. That's what I said. Yeah. I mean, Tommy's at 223. I quit listening to you five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Shocker <Yeah>. there. <laughs> Seven. There it is. All three. He locks up the match going on to meet Hall of Famer. Another Hall of Famer, Chris Barnes. Oh, Tommy bowled a great match there, too. Just yeah, yeah, he, phenomenal. He just... He had two frames where I don't think he could have thrown it any better no. and never no. got rewarded for his efforts. I, I, just knowing Tommy, this one hurts. Yeah, Phyllis says that Jason won uh, the BVL, giant Petrangler turn, but that wasn't a PBA 50 stop. <laughs> Tommy giving a shout out to Steve. Klein, our proprietor here, uh, him and his family that run this bowling center. Uh, he's sitting back behind us. Uh, yep, he's up top in the white. Yep. He couldn't get a better seat than that. Well, you'd have thought he could have got down <laughs> in front, but, you know. <laughs> I mean, maybe if he knew somebody to help him, help him get up a little closer. Yep. Another great Tommy, week for yeah. Tom Hess. Another great week. Yeah. Tommy being a little disgusted, and he's disappointed, you know. But he can't say that he didn't throw the ball well, you know. Th yeah, this what are you gonna do? You know, everybody out there that's a bowler, you know, you've peered one off your hand and you stoned a nine. You oh, done something. Nine Still a great tournament, and Tommy's making every show. He's gonna win again. Congratulations to Jason Couch moving on to the semifinal match. Nothing but Hall of Famers left in the top three. We've got some great matches coming up. Congratulations again, Tom Hess, Jason Couch, and Chris Barnes coming on for eight shots. Parker Bone for four, and we'll get. We're gonna take a quick break here. Get things set as Parker takes his practice shots. So everybody else can do that at home. Grab a snack, grab a beverage, come back for this uh, semifinal match. PBA 50 Cup here in Westland, Michigan.
get another shot of that Tom Hess shot while we have a break. Yeah. Maybe an eighth of an inch high. Maybe a sixteenth of an inch. Nonetheless. Tough. Well, it looks like Barnes is uh, getting on top of where Hess was at. Yeah, he was, uh, well, he's got two balls down there. He's got a reality check, which is pinned down, and then he's got a Nova pin up. Both of them with a mask, like right under the thumb. So they're almost drilled identical, just one pin up, one pin down. Uh, and he's been throwing different balls on each lane a lot this week, so I wouldn't be shocked to see him do it again. He sees a lane a lot different than everybody. And, uh, you're not gonna. You're not gonna trick him. That's for sure. So, Jason is actually throwing the Black Widow urethane. Mm -hmm. It's an asymmetrical ball. Yep. Pin at 12 o'clock. Mass right at the thumb. Um, I was thinking from over here, it, it kind of looked like the Hammer Raws, almost the same label. You just I couldn't see the Black Widow. Uh, so that's quite unique to the fact that throwing an asymmetrical ball uh, with his rev rate, and you, I would have thought that ball would have bounced off the pattern a little harder for him. He threw it all of day one every game and six of eight games day two and a lot of today. 
I mean, his next ball is, is, is the purple. I mean, that's the only thing, but he gets too much pushed with that. Pushed with it is what he told me yesterday when we talked about it. Where he can be more aggressive, which is, you know, that's his game, is aggressive with his, with his black widow than when he came with the purple. And because I thought at first it was a double cross. We saw him throw the double cross a lot this year. Throw right. it really good. Right. But he hasn't, I don't think he said it's not even left the bag this week. All right, there's our poll. What do our fans think? Who's going to win this match? Chris Barnes, Jason Couch. I picked both of these guys, so I, 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 I can't decide. Are you going to rub that in a little farther? <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. This mic's on? Is, is, yeah, is that oh, mic on? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, these were my one and two picks. Folks, if you're just joining us and you didn't listen to him all week, he picked, we, we have this draft, and he picked both of these guys in the draft. My first two picks? That was your first two picks. And Couch uh, I, still get, wants to. Well, he's going to finish on the right lane this time. I'm going to give Jace kudos because he still has one in there. So He does. I, yeah, I'm totally out. Thanks for playing, Tom. Yeah, I'm done. Oh, I, oh it's Barnes. Handling. So Barnes, uh, Barnes is making Couch finish on that right lane. Which is obviously the lane smart. that, yeah, because lane that's that where he's having trouble getting the yeah. ball to go through the pins. Yeah, one strike, three ten pins, and a seven pin. That's the uh, reality check. Well, that caught him a little bit off guard, but I think he got it to the right a little bit early. He really didn't get down to the break point, but. Some of the guys were able to do that this week. I mean, I watched Jack Jurek and uh, Jeff Johnson and I were talking. I, obviously, what they see and what we're seeing are two different things because Jack could get it to the right quicker and get it to set up off of that spot where a lot of guys got it to the right quicker and missed the head pin. But Jack could get it down lane to the right with Reverie, too, though. That's true. You know, which was, I mean, you know, I mean, his slower ball speed. Yeah, how, how good is Jack going throw out this year? I mean, he just keeps making every cut he bowls in and, and makes a deep run. So we got Barnes 54%, Couch 46%. Oh. How many people voted on that? What, 197,000? I have no idea. That's 22 to 8. I am surprised he doesn't switch balls because the Nova he was throwing, he said it's a little bit slower down lane. And obviously this reality check is coming off the pattern sideways. He could like That was like 22, 23 at the arrows yeah. to 8. But he didn't get I mean, remember, Hess was getting out to 4, 5, 3, 4, yeah. 5, and getting peeled back, so. But I don't, know if, if, I don't know if think Chris can get that ball that far down lane. It's just, it wants to go. We always talk about break point area, and a lot of times we have, I want to say, four to five boards down there, depending on some of these patterns. But I honestly believe on this pattern, down lane, you got like two to three, which isn't a lot at 42 no, not feet. At all. <laughs> I think a lot of people, they practice, but I don't know if they really practice if they're hitting the same spot down lane. You know, they practice hitting their target at the arrows, but that spot down lane is just as point and important. That was inside all the way. Looking at that speed again. Yes. Yeah, I mean, five. that one's going to read faster because that was it, there, it just had no belly to it at all. So it's going to read a little bit faster than maybe what it really well, as compared to the other shots. I mean, well, it was only 16-5. That's, that's, that's 11 to 9, maybe. Maybe. Well, you, you know he's probably trying to come a little higher in the pocket because the others, were, when they hit the pocket, they faced off left. Yeah, let's see. Here we go. Le yeah, 
that's 11. Oh, yeah, that's maybe nine and a half. Yeah, and he was that's out, pretty direct, you know, so. five, six. I mean, that could have been a split. The shots we've seen this week, that could have split easily. So I think that's a break. He left just a six pin. Converted it, no problem. See, this is something I always wonder. I mean, I know Jason knows his equipment. He, he's been bowling as long as anybody out here, but he's been in this ball 90-plus percent of the time this week. How do you make a change now? You know, I mean, you, you blink a blind ball change at this point? Well, you, we always talk about, you know, in the fill shots, you know, trying something different. That was better. And even his last shot of the last match, he only needed seven. You thought maybe he might have tried something, but I know sometimes seven pins are hard to get. Uh, do something goofy and you end up with a five count. But if he was going to throw something different, it either had to have been in that fill shot or maybe the first shot of this game. But yeah. like, you, I think he's got so much confidence in that ball right now. He's just going to either tweak where he's standing or maybe tweak his release a little bit. Chris got that one farther down lane. That guy is so up the back of the ball. He's down to 4-5 down lane. At least he got it out to the break point. Chris getting a re-rack. Looks like he moved everything a little bit right on that shot to get the ball down lane. Let's see... Uh, See if he does the same thing on lane 23. Where's our camera down lane? Uh, it's in Grand Rapids. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a couple of the camera shots we talked about getting set up, but with uh, with that last round of matches going so late, it was all we could do to get ready for this one. I mean, I heard John say a minute to go. It's like, oh, all right, we're done. I feel sorry for you guys trying to move all these cameras around. To get them in the right spot in just a short time. That's 22 23 at the arrows, and that still didn't get out to the break no. point down lane. He's no. got to get that out to probably five. And he's only get, that one maybe was seven. I could eight. see him. I could see him making a ball change, going to that altered maybe. The pearl cover stock, same core. Uh, but I'll just give him a little more push. That's not even on there. He's got a Nova on there. Unless. Well, look at that ball. I mean, that, that check, ball. reality check, it checked. Yeah. He, Looked like somebody kicked that off the end of the pattern. Ooh. 22.1. That's your spoil, ball speed. That old guy still got a little bit in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> I can throw it that hard. You know, everybody went uh, Google eyed over that Oscu video where he threw it over 30. Mm -hmm. That's a 12 home ball. Oh, is that what he threw? Yeah. Oh. That doesn't count. <laughs> sure it does. No. It sure does. He threw a ball 30 miles an hour. Hey. Yeah, that's a much better shot. But still, still deflected. Wow. Boy, that looked good. Yeah, but so, okay, so he. I think he's moved a little bit left and right trying to get that ball to shape on the back end. He's doing the same thing. So, isn't it time to maybe think about – that ball stopped, it looked like, at 48 feet. It quit going right. So, is there too much surface? Or, or he needs to maybe go to, go to that purple hammer. He can move farther left and shape it up? Yeah, I think the purple he could get on a little bit more and yeah, move left. Kind of what Dan Nolton was doing down here. Yeah. Uh, with just his black hammer. Just, just kind of jam it. Yeah. I, I honestly believe he's got to do something because that ball doesn't want to finish on that lane. Well, the good news for Jason, though, is, is Chris hasn't got it dialed in. I mean. It, but Chris was smart by making Jason finish on that right lane because he knows he, his strike percentage on that lane is, what, uh, 10%? Yeah, that's one for, what, one for seven. What would you do, Chase? Well, what I do? Or yeah, what would I? you do? Uh, honestly, it's so tough to watch the lanes right now by switching all these things. 
But I don't know. He's left, I feel like, half his leaves this week have all been seven pins. But couldn't tell you. There you go. Speaking of seven pins, see, uh, see what you did? Hey, <laughs> Karnak over there. <laughs> Chase Kaufman right in the ship there, cutting the show here tonight, doing a great job. Chase working with us here all week long, filling in. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Or as John Weber say, we appreciate it. Appreciate we sure appreciate it. it. <laughs> that was good. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I know we're, we're not trying to second guess Jason, but we're watching what his ball is doing. But it's, it's, a, it's a tight game. So. Maybe he's thinking, you know what? I don't, I don't need a three or four bagger yet. Anyway, um, sneak in a double, make your spares, and make Barnes find that three or four bagger to beat you. Well, right now, Bar like you said, Barnes is not lined up either, totally. So uh, he's got that left lane. That ball's super checking on him. He might have found the right lane if he gets it clear out to that break point out around five. But I mean, those are such yeah, steep just, angles. I mean, yeah, you just can't from, get it to that break point. Though. You're That's going the from 22, 23 at the arrows to five down lane and then what do you think he's a 20 year old again yeah. that, that got there that one got there yeah. I mean, that's not in everybody's repertoire to do to, to create such steep angles I don't think he likes that is he out of Rex well he's already he taken one. one I know he took one for sure and now I think we're on two, and you're only allowed two. So he's using them up early? Yep. That's it. What's he saying there? Head pin over a little yeah. bit to the right. I don't know. These are the three pins tight. It looks like it's tight from yeah. our angle. This is a big shot for him because he hasn't got it to the spot yet. Twenty. Oh, that one got there. That one got there. Barely. Barely got there. Well, it, I mean, if he it if wasn't he far. A, if he misses in a half hour, that's four nine. So he's what 20, 22, yeah, 23, yeah. but it's still only. Eight down lane. So what he tr he, he twerked his release to. Yeah, yeah, I think he I think he changed his wrist position a little bit there. Yeah, he, the he had to push. trick up his release to make it not jump so hard on the back end. All right, what's Jason gonna do? He's like ten and a half to six, but can't knock them all down. That's inside a little That's bit. That's inside. Curve oh, a little bit. Wow. More. There you go. Sixteen that forty-five again. Jason looking at the rack on the left lane, too. That's 12 13 to. Yeah, a little bit steeper through the front, kind of yep. shape a little bit more. I, for years, that was Jason's game. He was a lot farther right on the approach, a little steeper through the front end than yeah. most players on the left side. Did you like it? Mm. I think he's kind of, kind of hoping on that one. Yeah, a little bit. So he threw that one 16-6-5. Yeah, a little more direct. 16-4-5? Yeah, I never got that down lane. Never got that out. That was that was yeah. two boards inside of target at those range finders. That last, right, that last one's what, 45 feet? What is that range finder there? No, uh, the very far one, 42. Yeah, 42, okay. So Jace with 119 in the sixth. He's got some work to do. Barnes is 78 in the fourth, double up.
Go up 18. I think he's got yeah. something now. Yeah, Barnes throwing. You know, we always talk about drilling pin down stuff, and it, it lowers that differential so the ball isn't as angular on the back end. But that ball's pretty sharp off the spot on the back. Yeah, look at that release. He's getting the ball to really skid. Yeah, yeah what? Well, I mean, it's skidding and, well past. And if you the watch arrows. that label, it quits going counterclockwise and more end over end mm -hmm. on the back end. I mean, we talked about that a little earlier about that check stop. And I think Chris is probably the best at getting the ball to check up and quit. Well, there's a guy on that banner down there that was pretty good at it for a long time. A young man from Venezuela. Oh, Amaletto. That was a little steeper at the arrows. Yeah. Walking out a little bit, keeping those legs loose. How about this yeah, shot? Yeah, yeah that was almost like 24, 22. 25. That was, oh yeah. that was like 24 and still only got to eight. But he's tricked his release just so that ball doesn't overhook on the back end. He's got the right yeah. lane right now, but now he's got to figure out that left. Well, at the rate Chris is going, Not Jason needs every one of these. That was one of the best-looking shots he's thrown on that right lane. But that, that ball still deflected on him, too, though, a yeah. little bit. Yeah, it was it was quality shot. Yeah. Jason. 229 max for Jason Coach. Yeah. 258 for Chris Barnes. Yeah. Jason caught every bit of that one. <laughs> Didn't leave nothing in the bag of that yeah, one. Yeah, he banged on that yeah. one at the bottom. You're going to feel that one tomorrow. Definitely Chris is in the driver's seat. He's pretty much realistically he's just got to fill some frames here. He can't do anything stupid. Yeah, but he's got to get to that spot down lane. Yeah. That's the most room yeah. he's given one yet. Well, and Chris, he not like an average player and playing that steep an angle a lot of guys would get slow you know when they kind of need one to make sure it gets back but chris being chris barnes that's not going to happen he's going to give it everything he's got well and i guess that's a, a point for the people at home right i mean your normal league guy is going to throw that over there but try to try to make sure it hooks back where chris is thrown to a spot he's not he's not aiming for that one three pocket he's aiming for a spot down lane right exactly letting the ball do the work yeah. mm -hmm. whereas he, the rest of us you're going to grab it oh, let me make yeah, sure i, I make get sure it there you're, right he goes if he knows if he gets it to that spot the ball's going to the pocket he got a lot of that one bowling always has been point a to point b and it's no different he's getting the ball across the first target He's getting it to the second target. The ball reads the lane. No use worrying about the pins. They're not moving. <laughs> Get the ball to the spot down the lane. Well, unless we're at the National Polling Stadium when the, when the, uh, the subway goes there, then they, they do tend to move just a little bit sometimes. Yeah, that doesn't happen anywhere else. And you see Couch already giving the handshake. He knows, he knows what's he up. He knows it's all over. He's just going through the motions now. Another great match, though. So we saw early. I'll tell you what, after, after five frames, I don't think we could have picked a winner. Well, and, and now then, now we got a repeat of the deads. Yeah, Parker do. Bone. Everybody was looking for it. I'm yep. going to steal Wallace Cox's <laughs> line, our senior gold match here. <laughs> Parker yeah. Bone, Chris Barnes, the two boys, Ryan and uh, – Justin. Justin. It went brain dead. <laughs> well, there's, there's so, so many of them. There's yeah. so many of them, yeah. 
Just did that at the U-20 at Junior Gold. So both of these guys just going through the motions to finish it up, and we'll get on to the next match, which will be Parker Bone III, our tournament leader, and Chris Barnes. So Parker won in the Villages, and next week Chris gets to win in Aberdeen. The week after that, Parker wins again in Mooresville, and here they are. If Parker would win this tournament, it would be his 80th win. That would oh, be I counting you know, all of his regionals right, and nationals. would be his 80th win. Yeah, another another great week for Kyle. So I mean, we went through a season so far. He's, you know, take away the senior master. Other than that, he's bowled fantastic this year. Just he's done everything but get a win. Uh, well, that's unfortunate because there you go. There's your class right there. Well, there's something you don't see a whole lot of. You got two two guys on the same staff, Jason giving Parker a little bit of insight on what's going on in the lane. You got Jeff Johnson, the ball rep for Brunswick, and then you got Kelly Kulik here with Storm. Uh, she's been helping out all the Storm Road Grip Global guys. All right, what's Parker got there? That's not your thing. No, that is a Zenith Pearl, I think. Yeah, so I don't think we could have scripted this really any better, get these two to match up in the finals after their kids just bowled each other a week ago. I mean, it really doesn't get any better in this. No. I mean, Tom Hess wasn't rooting for this matchup. I guarantee it. But you know what? I think, oh. I think the fans were. I, I kind of was. There's Steve Klein, our owner. All right, only one of the night. That's it. T-shirt. Yeah. Oh, you're doing it. Time. Oh, Give him one chance. One chance. We got a break. We got a break. Make sure you're on the main channel, as if you'd be anywhere else right now. Click the blue button when it pops up. Your name will be randomly s entered into a drawing, and we will randomly select a person. He's lying. He's picking them by hand. I'm doing it for yep. Josh Rose. <laughs> I'm in here for Josh. That's what I'm doing. I think it's also worthy to note that in Parker's only two matches that he bowled in the brackets, he shot a 771 against Troy Lent and a 764 against Eugene McHugh. Yeah, only averaging 256. Only. That's all. It's too bad he can't get lined up. Yeah. When you talk about a guy that could repeat. I mean, I think you could go from year to year, decade to decade. He looks the same. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing other than his hair style has changed <laughs> and maybe he doesn't have a mustache. It looks the same. Yeah, I think was it was it Mooresville where we were looking at videos of him and yeah, it, nothing nothing's changed. I mean the hair is a little grayer. Yeah. Maybe yeah. about three pounds heavier. Not much more than <laughs> that. Maybe it, an inch shorter. I don't yeah. know. Don't you shrink it, it, as you grow? Well or as you get older. He used to comb his hair back. You go back to those early years, he had a lot hey. It, it kind of looked like Danny Disco. <laughs> he had it all coming back. Oh, it was the Villages, because remember, he put on his fake mustache in the Villages. That's right. where it was at. Yeah, he, he grabbed our gaff tape and uh, made himself a new mustache. All right, here's our winner, Terry Turner. Congratulations, Terry. The Bull TV marketing department will send you an email, so be on the lookout for that email. Oh. I don't think Parker wants to see that. And then lastly, let's see what the fans think. Oh, let's go 60 seconds real quick. There we go. What do you guys think? Who's going to win the PBA 50 Cup, Parker Bone the third or Chris Barnes?
or 56 44 right pretty now. Close. 30 seconds yeah, to go. I, I, this is going to be a hard one to call. I mean, obviously, Chris is bold on the pair. He's got a look. Mm -hmm. Parker's coming over, warming up, looking for a look. Uh, I think he jumps the, right to that purple now. The fact that this is the third lefty to be on this pair has that made the shot better on their side? Has it made it worse? Uh, You've had reactive and urethane going down the lane on his side. So, I mean, it's a toss-up. Well, we're I mean, at 50-50 right now on the fan vault with three seconds to go. <laughs> so, that was it, 50-50. Yep, final results, 50-50. Wow. So, I think, is that, is that why Parker tried that zenith early? Because the urethane going down, maybe he had a little hole or something? That's what I think. But, he but, tried but. reactive. and. Granted, if he, he gets to throw reactive because your thing went down and created a little hold for him, I, he's got more power at the pocket. Right. You know, it's not like he has to split hairs. But uh, it looks like he's going to go with the, the purple. He's going to try a, he's He's throwing that zenith again. He's going to give it another look. The biggest thing I think about Parker is because he's got such natural ball speed that he doesn't get a little overamped because it's easy for him because his timing is so pure mm -hmm. to throw it so firm that he, he can throw it right through the break point. Not that he intends to. It's just his swing is so free. So does Chris stick with the same strategy? Why would you change? No. Because he can. Okay, one more shot for Parker. That's uh that hit on that right lane wasn't – that didn't give me all the goosebumps. That's that couch reaction there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're getting to the 1-3, but – yeah. Yeah, it, <clears throat> it just not – I don't know. <laughs> it just exactly. didn't look <laughs> – where's that big guy? Quite the way <laughs> to put it. Yeah. It's a new technical term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the thought I was yeah, thinking of. Was, yeah. that, was that the squeaky pig or was that Tom? I'm not sure. <laughs> Either one. It sounds the same. Doesn't smell the same. <laughs> wow. Is that a compliment? <laughs> I don't think so. He's already won twice this year. He's a Masters champion. He's a world champion. He's a two-time PBA Tour Player of the Year, PBA and USBC Hall of Famer Parker Bowl the third looking for the third Let's Let's see, where was Barnes at in the overall standings for player of the year? This is a major, so it's double points. So yeah, the winner of this the winner of this match. Takes over the lead for player of the year. Ooh. Yeah. A little extra added incentive there. I mean, you know, the trophy, the title, the check, that's all good. But you take the money's a lead, nice, too. Take a lead into uh, Ten into grand. next week. Yeah. That shot looked pretty doggone comfortable for Chris Barnes. I think that extra money will help cover some of Parker's gas that he spent this week driving back and no forth kid. every day to Junior Gold Goodness across gracious. the state. Uh, been putting on the miles. That's 21 hey. at the arrow, 22 out to yeah, about the same shot we saw. And that ball never stopped going left. No. The thing about Parker, I, he, the guy's amazing. I mean, he flies from one end of the country to the other to get back and forth to do presentations and then come back and he bowls. Then he flies out again. Then he comes back and bowls. And it, it's like he never wears down. One of our greatest ambassadors. So let's watch where this ball goes off the pin deck. That's going to be the important part in where did that come from? We didn't see a ball go left or right that hard. That ball, ball never stopped going right. 
Well, that's a good sign, uh, I would say, on the uh, right lane. De definitely, yeah. Because that ball absolutely kept driving. Yeah, that's definitely not the reaction we've seen from any of the lefties yet uh, yet today. So Parker can move off of that. That's a shot you learn a lot from right there. There's something, you, I guess, unique. You just, you just notice a lot of the guys use chamois out here because they feel like they take the oil off the ball better. Parker still just uses a, a microfiber towel. So I don't know if that's really taking the oil off or just kind of spreading it around. Evens out the lane shine. Uh, so that one deflected. Yeah. That deflected a lot. Yeah, that is not the motion that you want to see in the first two frames when you feel that Parker or Chris is lined up. That was like five. But that ball just went dead left after it hit the pin. Yeah. But Well, two completely different shots, but both shots, something that Parker's going to take some information from and make some adjustments. I think he strikes the next two shots after seeing that. Well, he's definitely got to hope that Chris loses his reaction on that right lane. Yeah, you're going to say push. That went Brooklyn and struck. It's still, I think it's still hooking. I think it's coming off the ball return on lane 21. <clears throat> that <laughs> obviously never got to the spot. That's solid Brooklyn. Wow. Oh, that <laughs> runaway. It's true. <laughs> That's about as good as you can get it. I, I mean, call a runaway Brooklyn a flat Brooklyn. It's just more fun. Flat Brooklyn? Yeah, it's more of an insult. <laughs> All right. But would you take 12 of those in one game? Absolutely. Yeah. For 10000 Yes. Yeah, for, yeah. I'll okay. For, I'll do it for $10. <laughs> You'll do it for another squeaky toy. That's right. Oh. Oh. Then that one hit not so good, and the 10-pin just tumbles out. Getting in a little bit deeper. It doesn't. Yeah, he gets that one there, but it just, yeah, that steam rolls a See, nine. I thought, uh, you said deeper, but I thought he was closer to like 22. He didn't play it quite as deep. I, maybe I'm wrong. I, you, yeah, turn the, <laughs> you going to turn the screen so you can see better? Yeah, turn the screen a little bit. Okay. Well, Chris starting out with a turkey and Parker. Oh, my Lord. So the 5-6 just barely trip out. Not so good. Yeah. Remember the last one drove too hard. He makes a little adjustment. This one just, yeah, it's left of the eight pin. Yeah, that one did the same thing that happened on the left lane. Yeah. Now, in his previous match, when he shot 7-60 against Eugene, he was talking about tucking his pinky, untucking his pinky. He needed to get his hand more basically up the back and push the ball down the lane and let it read, but he might need to help this ball make the turn and drive. That one he liked better. That yep. one. He made a move on both lanes. It worked out on the left. It didn't work out. I mean, it struck on the right, but it's not, it's not the shot he wants. I, I'm not so sure that he wants to repeat that shot on no. the right lane. That's out to like seven, eight. Yeah, that one comes off the pattern yeah. a little bit earlier, though, and yeah. it makes it through the pin deck properly. Well, Chris went Brooklyn on this shot last time, so what can we look for? Flush, over push. You got it out there. Over push. It wasn't going to go Brooklyn. Yeah, I hear him say that was that was way worse. Well, that just kind of evened up the match a little bit right there. He's playing the right lane farther right, at least from my angle. Did I see that right at the arrows? 
It looked like he was like 18 at the earth. Yeah, it looked like it. And that ball did the same thing that Parker's doing. And this, that's a much stronger ball than what Parker's throwing. But same thing, it, it just went dead right off the well, off the one three pocket there. That burn spot down the lane could just, be causing the ball to slow down so much, it just has no energy left. But that, That's why I thought you'd go to that alter reality, because it's going to conserve just a little bit more. Well, true. I, and it, he could have went to that Nova, which is a hybrid. Uh, part pearl, uh, which well, should yeah. Yeah, store a little bit, and it's pinned up compared to this too. one pinned down. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that was like 25 at, almost at the arrows. 279 to 279 if they both strike out. Can we see another Barnes roll off against like yeah. he did against Haggett? Oh, boy, boy that was a great that roll off, my lord. So, in the fifth frame, we're talking about a possibility of a tie? Yep. <laughs> we got a little bit more noise going on behind us tonight than in some of the previous places. Good crowd in here. They've done great getting the crowds in here all week long. He's asking for that to wheel. So I, I think it would be safe to say whoever figures out the right lane the best is going to win this tournament. And Chris has three shots on that lane. Parker only has two more. Is that an advantage, you think? Well, it depends you better what hope he does it is. Here. Yeah, it depends on what yeah. he does on this shot. Yeah, you better hope it is. If he doesn't strike here, there's no advantage. Parker, 88 and a fourth. Chris, 99 and a fourth. But Chris has got a strike up. Parker, nine spare. You guys got a couple days off before we go do Hammond. I'm going to Houston. You're going to Houston. Striking against breast cancer makes doubles. Yeah, Chase is going home. Oh. There's a better shot. There you go. A little bit better. Got the result he wanted, but still not getting that shape. Was that the Lucy? Yep. And we're going to Bowling Green. Yeah, you got Almar Lane during Bowling Green. Yeah. 25000 added in that price fund. That's insane. Awesome. Nice big regional, in a regional. for all you guys. And then uh, Tuesday, the action starts down at Olympia Lanes in Hammond, Indiana. PBA 50 South Shore Open. Is the boss going to be back for that one? Uh, that's going to be uh, Brian and Mike. Yeah. Chris doubles up. He Got that strike on the right lane. And this is going to be the key. Yeah, he's a little farther right. Like 18, he got that out to like 4-5. It's a nice loose arm swing, too. Another re-rack. He doesn't like that left lane at all. Nope. Pins said well, fine. Yeah, you don't like about, us? We're how leaving. How about that lane without any pins? <laughs> I like it any better? Yeah. It got real quiet. Yeah, he doesn't like that one either. Didn't think so. It looks like it got nine pins off. No more re racks. Everything is just like push. Nope. Solid nine. Chris is literally playing at the arrows. Almost six to seven boards different at the arrows. 
Yeah, I mean, with the angles he's playing, that's, I don't think it's much of a surprise he finally leaves a nine pin because that ball is just going left. You said on this lane especially, like somebody's kicking it, and uh, that's, that's what happens. There was a little launch there. Did you see that? A little bit. Yeah. Oh, and that little frustration on the nine pin. Get that thing down the lane. And 258 possible for both players again. Hmm. Well, as you said, Parker's only got two more shots on this right lane, and this one I think is extremely critical to put some pressure back on Chris, but he's got to figure this lane out. I mean, it's, that's obvious, but he, he can't seem to get the ball to face. Jason had the same problem. The ball just hit the pocket, but just it deflected drastically. Too bad. That, no, was, that, 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 that was too pretty pure. Right there. You know, both of these guys are such incredible players, but you know, they make those subtle adjustments that is unseen to the naked eye, whether it be speed, loft, or a little wrist adjustment. Nine but to seven, the, firm. If dead firm in that ball. You didn't see the deflection that it was it was doing before. This one here is going to put a lot of pressure on Barnes. No, and he likes the pressure. Got to get up. Oh! Was that half pocket? <laughs> Third pocket? Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> that was a break. That's what you call that. It looked good, but it just, that ball just never turned a corner at all. Nope. Thank God for kickbacks. No chance of leaving an eight pin there. Well, folks, we definitely have a match. We got us a doozy. Jim Ross calls this a slobber knocker. Slobber knocker. <laughs> Where do you guys come up with this? The internet. Okay. <laughs> a little hesitation that Chris has got. Yeah, I think 24. he got her on that he, one a little got, bit more. Oh, he, did. You could see. he got a break on oh. that because that, that seven pin could have stood, and that would have been all ugly. If you go back in his earlier shots, he had that ball back on his wrist a little more. You could see the top of that logo there. You yeah. could only see about a third of it. So, yeah, that just uh, was in his setup. And it might have been intentional, but it was definitely a little bit different setup with his wrist position. You know, it, coming, it, off, coming off that nine pin, I think he wanted to kind of, you know, maybe flatten that one out a little bit. Yeah, it kind of floated down the lane. And, the, and it didn't. It didn't float. It <laughs> floated like a lead balloon. You know, when you're playing those steep angles like, uh-oh. Oh. When you're playing those steep angles like that, you, you want to make sure it turns the corner. So you, your intention is to float it, but at the last minute, maybe subconsciously, you just yeah. touch the fingers just a little just bit. Just a little. You just touch it, and it just takes off. So... Now, Chris Barnes, max score 238. The good thing is the, the, the count didn't hurt him. I mean, he was, he was on a strike, so it, it, it didn't really matter there. It wasn't on a double. On the tough lane, can he bury it? 
Oh, wow. trips out to seven. Four pin comes up, trips out the seven. What a break. Yeah, I can barely hear a Tom Carty He's sitting right next to me. The crowd loved that shot, didn't they? You think they're behind Parker now? They sure are. Look at, oh. Four. This shot is so key right here. He's on his good lane. Is it coming up? Oh! It, we don't see a lot of emotion out of Parker. No, that, that, that's about the most emotion yeah, you ever see out of Parker. Ball. Rare, and he's jumping right up, ready to go after this one more time. Just grabbing anything. This is going to be the, the heater right down the yeah. middle. He's throwing. Oh, he did shape a little bit. Unbelievable. What a comeback. Figuring out that right lane to take this to the win. What a match. And, uh, you know, there it another, is. another blown over there bars this week. Great sportsmanship. Nice handshake that there. Time heck of a game. Heck of a week. It's going to come up a little yeah. bit short. Chris is just going to go through the motions, get it over with. Well, you know. Parker was averaging two, 256 this afternoon. He's just 258, so he's right on par of where he's well, been. When so. this match started, we didn't think it was going to be a 258 the way that ball no, was going through the pins on the right lane. at all. Wow. All right, I think we got to go down and take care of some business. You got to go down and do an interview. Yeah. This Shots is the clinch shot. It. That is it. He knew it. Sure did. I I don't think you could have asked for a better finish. That's for sure. <laughs> Way to go, Parker Bone. And congratulations to Chris Barnes. I mean, he played one heck of a match all week long. He's bowled incredible this whole season. Great. Thanks so much if you can hear me back there. And uh, we love it here in Westland. We've been treated like kings. And uh, hospitality unsurpassed. So thanks so much. And uh, Stay tuned. Uh, Craig is going to go out and interview... Uh, Parker Bone the third. As soon as we get through the announcements, yeah. we'll get a a one on one interview here on Bull TV with uh, Craig Elliott and Parker Bone. Nice job. Parker, I think he he he's still he's still kind of hanging out there in La La Land. <laughs> he's just like, oh boy. TV fans, come over here a little bit more. It seems like we did this not too long ago, your third win this year. Um, I mean, we've had this conversation, but what's the motivation to keep pushing it to get out here and keep competing? I think my kids keep driving me to be better and better. You know, uh, <laughs> fortunately, last week, our oldest son, Justin, won junior gold, the U-20 division, and uh, he set the bar pretty high for the rest of us this week. So uh, I'll just say right now I'm very, very fortunate to be standing tall and and uh, I want to get back to Grand Rapids and, and root and cheer for my other two kids as well. You know, we were kind of having a good time in the booth. We called this the senior gold match because, you know, you had both your sons met last week in the U-20. I know you guys meet here. That's kind of special. Well, it is kind of special. And, you know, those two are going to bowl plenty of matches in the future, just like Chris and myself have just got done bowling right now. Uh, we hope that we're still bowling a couple of title matches as time would go. But uh, when you do it enough times, everything typically evens out at the end. Right now, I'm the one standing tall, but great week for Chris as well. So quickly, Parker, your third win this year, second major, and you take over the lead and points for player of the year. What's next? <laughs> next will be the, the next event that I bowl. I believe that we're going to Hammond, Indiana. Uh, there is a regional in between that down in Bowling Green, but that's only going to happen if one of my kids is not fortunate enough to make the TV show. Everybody at Vision Lanes, 